Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, our final conversation this morning uh, comes from a video that was released uh, a couple of days ago, maybe about a week or more ago. Um, a mother who was complaining bitterly about her child, Don Davis, who uh, was a student uh, at the Deeper Life uh, School in Uyo, Akwaibom. She brought him back home and realized that he was dealing with some physical and mental and very traumatic situations. According to the story, he had been a student of the school, of course, uh, was bedwetting. And then, of course, the teachers or the um, boarding school prefects then moved him from the, uh, the um, boarding uh, uh, school of the, or the, what was it called now? The hostels of the <laughs> junior students and moved him to a senior student's hostel. And from there, the trauma of Don Davis started. According to the story, he was sexually molested, harassed, and suffered months and months and months of, of, um, of harassment until his mother eventually picked him up. Um, since then, she has tried to get justice for her child. She has been to the school. She has met with the Commissioner for Education and Aquaibom State. She has met with the school principal. And it doesn't seem like a lot is being done in her favor. The Dipper Life um, uh, School eventually did put out a statement saying that investigations will be carried out and um, the, the uh, principal apparently was suspended or, or something like that. This morning, we're going to be speaking with Bolan Lea Jijola the founder of Amal Safety Foundation. Thank you so much for joining us and for sharing your thoughts with us this morning on this very sensitive topic. Thank you for having me. All right, I'll go with some. Let's get your perspective on the entire story. Um, it, does it look holistic uh, to you? Does it warrant further investigation? What actions needs to be taken in brief Okay, so um, initially when we all, you know, were alerted to the Facebook um, live, our first thought was the mom should have, you know, gone through a different channel, trying to get, we understand that she wanted to get justice for her child, but we were more concerned about, you know, safeguarding the, um, the child himself, not putting him out there, opening him up to, you know, further either humiliation or shame or, you know, traumatizing him further. But we also needed to understand that we, we were not fully informed of the situation. Nobody knew what had happened prior to her going online. No one knows whether she had, you know, reached out to anyone and had not gotten any answers. And out of wanting to get her child justice, went online. So with the way everything has happened now, we are hearing they've suspended the principal, which is a good step, but it does not attend to what we need attention being focused on. Because the issue here is every state has a child safeguarding, it's a, um, sorry. The child, child Rights Act, uh, yes. I think it has been Not even a Child right Rights Act. Every school has a is supposed to have a child protection policy, a safeguarding and child protection policy. And that policy is supposed to be implemented across board all the teachers are supposed to be aware of it, the caregivers, boarding house masters, boarding house mistresses. All the caregivers in the school are supposed to be informed about that policy. They're supposed to be conversant with it. They're supposed to understand what it entails. Because right. it outlines all the rights a child has and how they're supposed to keep their students and their ward safe. I'm, I'm very so sure that, that these things exist, and apologies, but I, I want you to help us understand how severe this issue is. Um, I initially had said it's, it's a very sensitive topic because of all that is involved mm -hmm. here. Because this involves yes. parents of the abusers who would, of course, have to come defend their children. It involves mm -hmm. the perspective of the Commissioner for Education in Akwaibom State. It involves the principal of the school. And, of course, Pastor Kumui mm -hmm. of the Deeper Life Bible Church has also been brought in here. So it's a very sensitive discussion. But I, I yes. from the child's perspective, because we're talking about this now not because of the mother or because of any other person, but because of the child. Mm -hmm. So I want you to help us understand how severe this is and, and paint a picture of if this is the true reality of junior students in boarding schools across Nigeria, um, is it safe from this whole incident to send your child to boarding school? And, and, you know, how terrible must this boy have suffered in the months leading to all of this? 
Okay, as um, someone who, um, I, there was an organization I used to volunteer with, um, they are called the Amazing Amazon Initiative. So what we used to do then was go for sexual abuse awareness across schools, educating children on sexual abuse, you know, telling them the guidelines to follow, how to report, things like that. And in most cases, we would have sessions where we had feedback. And judging from the feedback we used to get then, and we, um, you know, comparing it with this situation now, this situation is really serious, not only for the boy himself, but for everyone involved. Because I, I can't begin to imagine the amount of trauma this boy has gone through. Because during our own awareness programs then, we would have, you know, children come up to us and tell us, you know, they've been abused by either parents or teachers or staff. There was a school in Lagos then that, you know, there was a teacher that most of the students begin, began to speak up after we did the program. And what they did was just sack the teacher. Nothing else was done. So basically, this situation as it is now, it's very serious. All right. I, I in wanna... as much as they are still saying it's um, alleged, everybody would have to take responsibility at some point. All right. I, I was actually going to try and highlight that, that as it, at the moment... What it is, is an allegation. They are saying mm -hmm. that investigation is ongoing. My question is, this is not rocket science. There are students mm -hmm. who were at the school when the um, alleged abuse happened. And then they had a meeting, however it is that they've had it. The school says they're going to conduct their own investigation. My concern is, it's been over a week I think I saw this story, the, the timestamp on it was around December the 22nd. This is December mm -hmm. the 29th, if not the 30th. Does it yes. take that long to investigate a situation like this and take action immediately to show seriousness against alleged child abuse in this circumstance? Hmm. Okay. Um, since this situation happened in Akwa Ibom, I'm not privy to how you know, their, their, own, their own strategy works. But in Lagos State, what I know is when a case like this is brought up, initially what happens is the child is taken to a sexual abuse referral center, a test is done. And if it's, you know, ascertained that this child has been abused or this day, you know, there has been tears or anything like that, then it is no longer an allegation. An investigation has to start. If the child can name the perpetrators, they have to be brought to book, they have to be questioned. So I do not understand the method or the strategy that Aqua Ibom is using. And just as we always realize, the longer it takes for a case to be investigated, the less likely the chances then of that should child it, shouldn't getting it be justice. Then, should, shouldn't it be then that effort and, um, and the pressure must be put on getting to the conclusion of whatever investigation that they are doing. So justice, if the boy was indeed abused, justice can be meted out immediately Does it as seem against like, justice yes. suspension. Does it seem like and the, that's what the state at, government is um, dragging its feet with this issue? Exactly. And every state has a child protection network. And the work of the child protection network is to ensure that any child that has been abused or neglected or, you know, tormented in any way gets justice no matter what. So we are a little bit surprised as to why the Aqua Ibom CPN is a bit silent on this, because I know here in Lagos we are up and doing. So if the CPN can, in Aqua Ibom can also weigh on them to, you know, ask that what is going on, because it seems everyone is taking a back seat because they've said the governor is, you know, investigating it and all that. Because there's also in the news there that um, on Thursday, um, Mrs. Deborah said she was called in and there was a sit down and she was more or less threatened again. Because what we are seeing is more of victim shaming. They are trying to silence her. They are trying to coerce her into, you know, keeping quiet. And we are a bit worried that this case might end up being, you know, swept under the carpet. So it's, 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 it's a lot of concern for us. And I heard that people have been, you know, calling out... Um, Pastor Kumuyi asking him to comment. 
Exactly. Well, we're going days. to come to that aspect mm -hmm. of the conversation. We know that, mm -hmm. that he is the head of Deep Life Church, but there are exactly. administrators. Is it um, a situation of one easy lies the head that wear the crown in this scenario, or it's actually accurate to be calling him out in a situation mm. where he probably got to hear as much as any other person uh, via the media? Mm. Well, why, while calling him out might seem like the right thing to do, there's really not much he can say except just issue out a press statement, just like you said, because the school has a principal, the school has administrators, the school has a board, and they should have heard long before the matter got to a Facebook Live. It's, because it's... we have students in that school, we have teachers in that school, because I'm sure the boy would have spoken to someone at some point in time. It's, um... So are we are we saying they didn't they they don't they don't have meetings amongst themselves they don't you know air any issues that the school has because it's like more or less this because we are saying now today is Don Davis how many other students do we know and that's have that's gone the thing through that what I, he has gone through that, that's the thing that I mentioned earlier um, there's mm -hmm. so, so much hypocrisy within all of this um, but it it you know it's it's a situation that should be, of course, making alarms run across the whole school and across the whole state um, about yes. how many other students in that boarding school are going through the same abuse. And not just there, but across, you know, the whole of Nigeria. In boarding schools today, how safe are your kids? And I'm not just talking about female kids now, including the male um, kids. How mm -hmm. safe are they? And, and everyone who has a child in boarding school should, you know, be ex extremely worried about what their child may be dealing with. I, mm -hmm. I want us to move away from Pastor Kumui because, like you said, you know, he really yes. you know, can only put out a statement and maybe take mm -hmm. action with regards to firing people. But there should be actions taken by the um, Akwaibom State um, government. The police maybe yes. should you know, be, be involved in a situation like this. This is mm -hmm. a, a monstrous story. I, I can't imagine how bad this is. I can't, I can't describe it with words, how shocked I am about, you know, a story like this. And so why does it seem like they, I'm the only one who's angry? <laughs> You're not the only one who's angry. I am angry as well. Because um, as a parent, when I first saw the Facebook Live, I was in shock. And I remember sitting my son down and asking him, I know he goes to boarding school as well, and I asked, oh. are you fine? And he was like, I'm fine, mommy. You know, and I asked all the necessary questions. But even without, without me asking, like I said, every school has a policy that they implement. And the school my son goes to, I know 100% for sure that they have zero tolerance to bullying. They have zero tolerance to, you know, um, harassing each other. So I, even before asking him, I was rest assured. But that unease would still remain. I had parents saying, oh, they were going to begin to look into schools more closely before dropping their children. Some saying they are not going to put their children in boarding house again. It's, it's monstrous, is it, just no, like no, is this, is, um, I don't know if I should be asking this, but is, is, it, um, is this incident, which is yet to be proven, enough for us to be questioning the boarding school system, which has, over the years, done amazing job of, you know, churning out refined young men and women. Okay. So taking from what you said, we're saying over the years. When, you know, in our own time, because I went to a boarding school as well, there were no incidences of sexual abuse, but, you know, there was bullying, there was body shaming. That was the norm then in our own time. Body shaming was there, bullying was there, coercion was there. But, you know, with time... Some people got justice, some didn't. Some toughened up, some didn't. So for me, I would, I would like to say probably this is something that it's like a rot that started at some point in time. And because it has not been properly addressed over the years, just like you said, it has now evolved into something else. Now, that is not to say that secondary schools, boarding schools have not been doing their job but it also means that this is a wake-up call, that they need to now start looking into issues that they would rather keep quiet. All because right. just like I said, when we used to go for sexual awareness programs, in any school where a child was found to be abused, the initial reaction of the school was to silence it. 
Yeah, and okay. they will say, oh, we'll talk to the parents behind the scenes, sort it out and all that. And if we continue doing that, just as we always say, it is silence that makes this sexual abuse keep on growing. What would you... We need to address that. What would you... Of course, now you've spoken, you know, that we should end the culture of silence. Um, mm. Sad, you also mentioned, you know, that it seems like uh, the mother was threatened at um, the meetings that she attended with... Yeah, uh, I actually, I actually saw a video of her yes. crying and afraid. Um, yes. Yeah. But yes, I, I, yes. I want you, and of course, I'm sure that's, you know, the main reason the Justice for Don Davis hashtag started on social media. And so it's getting more traction. It's getting more people talking about it. Um, and it's a, it's a huge shame. But I, I want your thoughts on the uh, perpetrators. And I'm talking now about the senior students who might still be seen as juveniles. Um, what can possibly be done, you know, if investigations are carried out and it's found that they, were, they are guilty? Um, in what ways can they be made examples of, you know, to help save other students across Nigeria? That's a big one because at the end of the day we are dealing with, this case concerns children, child-on-child -child sexual abuse. Yes. And in cases like that, you now have to take a step back and you know, observe the situation. It's a whole lot to deal with because these are these are young young men's lives we are talking about here. So basically, what would most likely happen if he can name every single person that abused him? They would most likely have to face probably some charges. They they might be expelled from school. There would most likely be other, you know other um, charges brought up against them. But can, right now, you know, sue? just because they are still... You said? Can the mother sue? Uh, because I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, yes. I'm really just she thinking about sue, how she can she go can all the way. She can sue the school, but you know how the Nigerian system works. So, uh, just, I, I, um, wonder... I think a couple of months back, I was here on an interview about um, a lady that was abused by a senator, and they said she was going to get compensation after they sued. And then we now stay here and the compensation was going to be in bits and pieces. So she can sue, yes. But That's... would she get the compensation she needs? And right now, even suing the school is not even top priority, but getting the boy the mental help he needs. That takes me because to the I question saw the before I, I and I wanted after. to ask. That takes me to the question I really wanted to ask you. The responsibility of grooming our young men um, should we leave it solely for the school administration? You said yourself, when you saw the story, you called your young son and you asked him questions. What is the role of parents in educating their young boys and girls on the issue of consent and behavior? You talked about bullying as part of some of the things that we experience in boarding school. It is not okay, but it still happens. These are mm -hmm. being perpetrated by young people who are students themselves. So should we leave everything with the school? What role is, the, is the, there for the parents to take a little more seriously? Well, for me, I would say every time I'm asked that, the, the role of bringing up a child, instilling values, strengthening values, does not lie solely with the school. Even if the child is in boarding house, at the end of the day, this child comes back home to you. Before the child joined boarding house, the child was at home with you. So the responsibility in, you know, strengthening a child's values, strengthening a child's character is a two-way street. Once your child begins a school, you have to work hand in hand with the school to make sure that whatever he learns in school, you are reinforcing it at home. Whatever you are teaching him in, at home, he's reinforcing it in school. And especially with, you know, negative characters, bad um, influences, you need to be able to address it. And you need to be able to have frequent talks with your school's administrator when you have issues. Because I know from, even from primary school level, all my children, once I have a concern, I don't waste my time. I go straight to the head of school or I go to their quality control <clears throat> assurance officer. And I mentioned, oh, I noticed X, Y, Z, what can be done. But um, nowadays we have more of, you know, like lazy parenting. We have parents that expect the teachers, we expect the school to do everything for us. We begin to say things like, oh, I'm paying you. I expect my child to you know, be able to do this and do that. I don't expect my child to do this and do that. 
All and then right. you have parents that probably their children are called up for, you know, one misdemeanor or the other. And they go, oh, no, this child didn't learn this from home. He learned it from school. So at some point, we as parents need to become more honest with ourselves. When we know that our children are doing certain things that are not part of the norm, we should All be right. able to address it. And All right, Bolanle Ajijola, mm -hmm. thank you very much for joining us and sharing your thoughts on the matter. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's our pleasure. Such a shame. You know, what she was talking about, um, uh, parents, and yes, there are plenty of that. As way back as 2006, 2005, you know, I had, I'm not talking about modern school, I'm talking about village school. I had a teacher, a parent come to me and say, I am failing in teaching the son who is impossible to handle. And that was the first time in my life I chased a child that you are not teaching her son the right things. And I was just mouth agape watching. I'm, I'm, you know? So it, that was then. Yes. Imagine what happens now. Parents go to school to fight teachers for actions that what teachers see on a daily basis is not something we'll, we'll have time to discuss on this program. I'm particularly disgusted with all of this because of the... It, it seems like, you know, a Nigerian culture of silencing or, you know, shutting down a problem um, to hide shame. And it's, you know, it's not just, you know, with the government now. When the government it's criticized, the very next thing they do is try to bully you into silence or, you know, try to force you into silence. And it's, you know, it's the same culture that we have. Yeah, um, I, I, I see what and you're then, saying. With, and, because we saw a story on um, the, that the Commissioner of Information yes. was asking her to take down the video. I think all of these, I think conversation will be on FEMA basis. If we have a quick investigation, find the results, and, and, and then we call these people so out. It's, it's same thing that I'm saying. It shouldn't take six months to investigate a situation like this. It shouldn't take two years. It shouldn't take press statements to investigate a situation like this. I want to know what a parent feels when they get to school and they tell them that their son is sexually abusing a junior student. I want to know what parent is going to want to be defending their son at a time like that. I want to know what parent is going to be trying to silence a situation like that. You have an animal it's that like you said it's a for, complicated for, conversation for that we will continue to have and see what happens it is indeed a complicated conversation that we can't even begin to you know scratch the surface today we'll continue we'll see what happens and of course on the breakfast we will talk about it thank you very much for staying with us all the way from 7 a.m up until now uh, it's been a missed bag we've talked about as much as we could uh, that was making uh, headlines in the news this morning and of course, uh, today in history, we shared a little bit with you. Thank you very much once again for your time and for spending your um, holidays with us. Um, join us on social media at PLOS TV Africa, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, our YouTube channel, same name, at PLOS TV Africa. The news is up next. Yeah, I'm Felicity Izuike. And I'm Osao Gheogboa.